I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Jeff Booth, entrepreneur, tech leader, and author of The Price of Tomorrow. Jeff, welcome to the show, and thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ashton. You're very welcome. I'd love to kick off our time by just starting with a little bit of background on yourself and your current philosophy on investing and wealth preservation before we dive in. Uh, my background I was a tech entrepreneur. That's probably the easiest way to say it. So most of my time, it goes into either founding or chairing uh, technology companies that I have, so I'm very involved in. Um, I'm an author, a best-selling author now, but that was a, I'm a reluctant author. I didn't want to write the book. Um, and so how that talks about into philosophy of investing, I, I, I find if you understand the macro, kind of from a first principle understanding of really deep on, on certain issues, mm -hmm. you, it makes you also a better investor. So th in fact, that's what you do in a technology company as well. You're investing your time to be able to, to try to create a whole bunch of value. And, and you have to really understand the problem you're solving and how to solve it in, in, in a specific way. Definitely. And the technology industry is just moving so quickly. You talk in your book about how technology is a deflationary asset. And you know, we see this curve where computers are getting so much faster and cheaper every year. And the dichotomy of the, the markets and the way that they're designed to grow with inflation versus technology as a deflationary asset doesn't really compute because everything seems to be getting more expensive uh, because of the way that the economy is working right now with all the stimulus that is, is happening. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, can you elaborate on you know, this dichotomy where we have inflation in the markets and the, the way that the markets have been structured has been around for a long time and now technology is starting to catch up and, and it doesn't really equate to how the markets um, work in terms of growth? Well, so there's a fundamental of misunderstanding most people have, and, and that's why I wrote the book. And, and you know from reading it, it, it plays out like a, like a tarot card, so it's saying exactly what's happening in, in the world today. And it'll, it also predicts what's going to happen next. Um, that came from understanding this, and I, it also made me a reluctant author. It came from understanding that technology provides exponential efficiency. And, and in all the technology companies that I'm involved in, um, so I'm at the front edge of all these technology companies in different industries, and I'm watching how fast things are moving. And so, so it would blow people away how fast technology is moving if they really understood how, how fast it's moving mm -hmm. um, and how, how much efficient, efficiency that brings to our lives and is therefore deflationary. It mm -hmm. makes prices go down, right? Because it saves labor, mm -hmm. right? It reduces labor. There isn't a CEO I work with. There isn't a CEO in, technology, in a technology company that in, in puts in technology to make their prices go up, right? Mm -hmm. You do it to save time, to, to make things better for, cost less for, and you get more as a result. It's actually why uh, on your phone, if you look at your phone, all of the apps, everything is free on your phone. Mm -hmm. And next year you could use to buy that, that same phone. You could get it for free with a plan, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's your camera, it's your AI assistant, it's Google, it's Waze, it's a, millions of other things. It all is, it is in the layer of technology for free. And that layer is moving into every part of our world, right? Every industry, every everywhere. So you would, you would naturally as a byproduct think, why aren't prices getting cheaper everywhere? It's mm -hmm. I'm getting more power, more abundance in my phone. I'm getting my TV is getting bigger and more powerful. But why am I not getting that everywhere? Why are, why are some prices going up? And if you follow that logic and look deeper, you'll find this: um, the global the global debt in the world is uh, was, was pre-COVID 250 trillion to run an 80 trillion dollar global economy. And you could say, okay, well, maybe if taxes went up over time or growth growth went fast enough, we could pay back global debt at some sort of time. But when you look deeper into that, what you realize is $180 trillion of that global debt has come in the last 20 years. And it's come as a byproduct of this, technology driving prices down and an and inflationary monetary policy that requires prices going up. Mm-hmm. 
And so all of the second order effects, politics, everything else, wealth divide is actually a function of that battle between mm -hmm. technology and monetary policy. Mm -hmm. And in the end, monetary policy will not win this battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super interesting. And you, know, you touch on the fact that the, the market and the way that we need inflation to grow has been around for, you know, since the industrial revolution and the way that things are growing now with the techno technological revolution is is different and something is going to have to change so that these things can equate and all of the other assets that we see uh, aren't getting more expensive uh, and sort of technology integrates into those industries so that they can also become cheaper and faster and, and make our lives better can you touch on you know what what needs to happen for this to merge these two different uh, you know industries they won't. Uh, um, un unfortunately, the, those two industries won't merge. It's, there's too much political stuff. It's almost like saying um, a big business can change everything about that big business to create a new business. Mm -hmm. It's actually why it typically doesn't happen. It come, the change comes from the outside. Um, when I wrote the book, I was hopeful that, uh, that, that economists, politicians would see what was happening because it, if you actually understand what's happening, it's actually a good thing for society, right? Mm -hmm. You use technology to free your time, right? So you shouldn't have the same, shouldn't need the same amount of jobs if you let the natural course of, uh, if you let gravity happen on technology, mm -hmm. because things would get lower and lower cost and our time would be freed. Stopping that by printing money is actually robbing from society's most, so robbing from societies most unable to pay and, mm -hmm. and putting it in the hands of the wealthy and they don't know that they got they got a gift nor do the poor realize that they, they got their pockets picked and 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 so socialism is a pretty uh, easy to understand rise out of what's happening as a whole bunch of people can't afford to pay their bills and actually if you think about this so individually it's individually it's very hard to see an overall overall connected system by looking at an independent part of the system mm -hmm. so if you think about so you look at everybody believing housing always goes up they don't ask the other side of that question would housing go up if there wasn't 185 trillion dollars of stimulus in the last 20 years mm -hmm. nor do they ask the question Will there be another $185 trillion of stimulus over the next 10 years to keep it going? Mm -hmm. Right. Because if you don't believe that's going to happen, the natural pricing, and there is no such thing as a free market right now, it's all manipulated. So natural pricing would collapse. Mm -hmm. But if, if, the, if the pricing of all your assets collapsed, the existing system would reset. So what's happening is governments are trying to, because if you let deflation happen now with this much debt, the debt explodes in real terms. Mm -hmm. So governments are trying to stop, central banks all over the world are trying to stop that happening. And what they're doing is manipulating the currency by doing it. And that manipulation means you're, the real value of your purchase, your dollar is going down. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, and that'll break currency after currency because they can't stop technology from advancing. In fact, what they're doing is actually ironically making it happen faster because if you think about yourself, if you were a CEO and a government said, and it said, we're going to make your currency worth less, would you hold it on? Would you hold cash on your balance sheet? You wouldn't, right? Would you in turn instead, the only way you knew you could actually make money or deliver profits is to drive technology into your business faster, mm -hmm. right? So you drive technology into your business faster and destroy those jobs faster. And so, so we're, we're, we're to your question about uh, these two forces, are they, can they overlap? They're diametrically opposed. Mm -hmm. They can't. And so, so, so we're going to have a reset to the world currency order one way or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in some time in the near future, and it's hard to look, you know, past three to five years from now, but right now seems to be a pivotal time. And we were talking about you know, the amount of stimulus and, and the debt that's being printed. And you know, the Federal Reserve has uh, said that they're gonna keep interest rates really, really low. And it was you know, 2022 and now it's 2026. And who knows how long uh, they're gonna continue so, with that. I, Ashton, I laugh at that comment, right? <laughs> so, so since 94, they've said that. 
Yeah. Like look at look at look at the projections. Look at the economists that what they said inflation would would be, and and why they can't get growth. And we'll look at the path on interest rates, lower and lower and lower. And every time that they they try to raise them, the economy collapses. Mm -hmm. Right? It, the interest rates are going lower. Interest rates are going negative. Fundamentally, because it's a structural problem. The U.S. had a tri trillion dollar, more than a trillion dollar deficit prior to COVID. Right? Mm -hmm. If you remove that deficit, if you remove any sort of semblance of free markets, if you don't keep stimulating, the whole thing unwinds. So stimulate, they will. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, a lot of you know this, all of this news throughout 2020 is getting a lot of retail investors and just you know middle class and lower class people interested in how to preserve their wealth because they're starting to hear that you know the dollar may not be the best spot uh, and that has them going into things like the stock market and gold and silver and bitcoin um, but at the same time it seems like the stock market is also you know not a very safe place uh, as opposed to the dollar you know do you have any thoughts on the choices that these people in the middle class are, are making um so so I understand all the choices, right? So if you, if uh, I, and, and so people are trying to get their money into something that's a, some, a relative store of value. Technology stocks are a relative store of value in this because mm -hmm. they're, 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 they don't have debt. They're, they have tons of cash. They work on a network effect. They're growing really fast. They might be overpriced, um, and they're certainly overpriced if you let a free market uh, decide what was would happen. But uh, but it's a relative store of value in what's mm -hmm. happening. But what ends up happening and why people are so fooled by this um, and look throughout history as the pendulum goes back and forth through the sands of time of history is people denominate their wealth all in their own currency. They buy housing, they buy stocks, they buy everything else, and it's all in denominated in their, their own currency. And as that currency is destroyed, Actually, some people win out of that, right? Stocks go up because that really what's happened is currency value has gone down and the stock has gone up in relation, same as housing, housing goes up. But when, when it really breaks, all of that wealth is denominated in the current uh, currency and the reset is horrific for those people. You ask, mm -hmm. I always ask, why didn't people in, in kind of Nazi Germany leave as they saw this happening? They don't leave because, because a lot of people are getting actually very wealthy as a result of it, but they don't know that their frogs boiling in a pot and mm -hmm. all that wealth is going to be stripped from them. Mm -hmm. So that leads into, I think, where, you, where you're going. In, in that, Bitcoin is a lifeboat into um, a, away from the economic storms that are coming. And, and I actually don't think it can be stopped right now. You asked my investing philosophy and everything else. Now, I might be wrong there. Um, about Bitcoin, but I've gone down the rabbit hole in a whole bunch of different areas trying to find out where this where, where this is wrong. And what I would say is, there's a way more chance that that, that Bitcoin is is totally underappreciated as a safe asset and a store of value in this than me being wrong. I could be wrong, mm -hmm. but that is a bet I would play all day long. Um, and it, for me, it's not about health protection it's about um it, it's about um a, a lifeboat mm -hmm. it's a, um it, this is if you go through his, history and you see what happens when when currencies get up this out of control by the way history d tells you kind of what happens kind of to the world when this happens but it doesn't tell you what's happening now because to, mm -hmm. today we have two different things that are happening Technology is moving way faster, way faster than people believe, and that's going to mean a whole bunch less jobs, right? And we have an alternative in Bitcoin where there wasn't ever an alternative. So mm -hmm. both of those things happening are going to provide, I think this, this what's going to happen, it might accelerate the trends on all sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned Bitcoin, and I was going to ask you about the deflationary nature of Bitcoin's economics with a fixed supply and you know an asymptote towards less Bitcoins being released uh, each year and as well uh, the fact that the governments have been talking about central bank digital currencies which is going to be you know a, a national currency but have some kind of blockchain technology built into it um, and that may not have 
deflationary principles, but it's sort of a stepping stone towards using the underlying technology that Bitcoin is built on and integrating that into the national currency. Um, do you see those as steps towards the right direction? No, I see them as opposite. I, I see the, the national currencies. As, so, so I wrote in my book that the IMF, and there's a working paper I cite in the book, that the IMF said interest rates in the next crisis have to go to negative 6% to have a chance to avoid them, right? Wow. Avoid what's happening. And so we're there right now. But why can't interest rates go to negative 6%? because people take their money out of the bank and they put it under the mattress and yeah. therefore the bank would collapse. And so we would see the emperor has no clothes, right? And it would all, and we realize the whole thing's built on a Ponzi scheme. That's why they can't right now. Mm -hmm. But in a digital currency, if they can manipulate that and give you a negative answer and, and you're doing everything in a digital currency, it's con totally controlled. Mm -hmm. That's so, so these are, again, I totally understand why central banks are, desperate to have their own digital currencies. I understand why the yuan um, last this week is is giving people money in their digital currency so that they start using that digital currency so they have more control. Right? Mm -hmm. I totally understand the game mechanics of this. What I'm getting at is Bitcoin is totally different. It's completely yeah. different. And, and it, I don't think it can be stopped by central bank. They will try, some will try. But everyone that tries creates more of an incentive for other uh, governments to accept Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And so, so just the game theory to build, built into Bitcoin and in, into the model is, uh, is, is what I think will, will drive that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super interesting, especially with a lot of countries that have experienced you know, hyperinflation. A lot of those citizens are already moving to Bitcoin. And you know, in Venezuela, uh, the, the citizens that bought Bitcoin at the all-time high at $20,000 are still ahead, uh, as opposed to holding their own Venezuelan uh, bolivar. So that's super interesting. Like, like, and Like staggering ahead, right? Yeah. Like millions of times ahead, right? The, 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 the bolivar doesn't, the, 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 it can't buy anything. Yeah. Right. So, so that's what's happening in Turkey right now. And that's what's happening, and and so in, it lo a lot of times, as this happens throughout the world, look, if you look at Germany, or 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 U.S. on gold reserve before, what ends up happening is the government comes and confiscates everything, and forces you mm -hmm. to revalue into that currency. It's entire. It's a, it's impossible to do that on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. That's 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 what makes makes it such a I would say such a lifeboat, such a critical lifeboat in what's coming. I, uh, cool quote i can't remember again who said it but uh bitcoin price is the lagging indicator of people's understanding of money mm, that is cool all right jeff we're running out of time but uh, my last question is do you have any advice or suggestions for people that are looking to get ahead and preserve their wealth as they uh, potentially lead to a bumpy road ahead I, you know, I'm going to change that question if you don't, if you don't mind. Here's the advice. Uh, here's the advice I would give. In a world that we're seeing right now, most people think it's something else. Most people think mm -hmm. it's the Republican Party, Democratic Party in Canada would be different in world, but all of it is the same thing. All of what is trying to divide you from somebody else is actually fundamentally way back over here. A deflationary world, or sorry, a technology-driven world where technology is advancing, frees our time. And that requires a deflationary currency. It requires it. There, there is nothing that in an existing system that can stop that from happening. So when people blame other people by looking at individual elements of the system, don't bite to the blame. Mm -hmm. right? It's something way bigger than you know. And, and so if you actually understand that from a first principle standpoint, what is happening, you'll be way better protected both in your life because as, 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 as people divide on each other, but also you'll be protected in your wealth because you can make some good decisions on where to put your wealth. Mm -hmm. Great advice, Jeff. And where can others learn more about your work and your book? Uh, the book is called The Price of Tomorrow, uh, Why Deflation is Key to an Abundant Future. Um, you can look at that. You can find that on Amazon and follow me on Twitter at Jeff Booth. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Jeff. It's been a pleasure and all the best. And let's follow up in the near future. Awesome. Thanks.